Welcome to Shear, one of the prettiest villages in Surrey, surrounded by the lush countryside of the Surrey Hills and home to a handful of beautiful old cottages, quaint shops and narrow streets that come together to form the bedrock of a compact countryside community. On this walk around Shear, we'll pass by the village's most popular landmarks, from the trickling River Tillingbourne to the historic White Horse Pub, and we'll even take a look inside the village's beautiful Norman era church, which has stood at the heart of the community for over 800 years, and in recent years has even found itself as a popular spot in Hollywood movies. Before we get into all of that, however, we're starting our walk on the narrow Shear Lane which enters the village from the south, and which is home to this long building we're passing now, the Old Malt House, the place where locally produced grain was converted into malt, an important ingredient for the brewing of beer. Nowadays, Shears Old Malt House is home to a small gallery and a boutique fashion shop that's been operating in the village for nearly 30 years, having developed quite a reputation across Surrey in all that time. Another local establishment that has quite the reputation stands just a few feet further down Shear Lane, this being the William Bray, or the Bray for short, a quintessential English pub that caters to many of the people who come to Shear for a visit. The pub takes its name from William Bray, a writer born here in Shear back in 1736. Among his many works, Bray is best known today as the co-author of a sweeping account of the history of Surrey a work which involved him visiting every town, village and church in the county over several years. Shear, Bray's hometown, is certainly one of the most picturesque in what is already one of England's greenest and most beautiful counties. But as we now make our way onto the compact village square, surrounded by shops and more cottages, where exactly in Surrey would you find Shear? Well, as you can see from this map, Shear, a small rural village of few more than a thousand people, is located right in the heart of Surrey, in a beautifully green area roughly halfway between the towns of Guildford and Dorking. Shear's proximity to two large towns, as well as London, has made it a popular holiday spot in recent years, as a place to escape the hustle and bustle and retreat to a calmer world, home to beautiful countryside and historic landmarks galore. Here on the eastern edge of the square, we find Shear's Village War Memorial, unveiled in 1921 in memory of the locals who lost their lives in the two world wars, and whose names are still found inscribed inside the building just up ahead, the beautiful St James's Church. By far and away the most prominent landmark in Shear, St James's Church is also the oldest building in the village, dating at its oldest all the way back to the year 1190. As we see it today, St James's is made up of a mishmash of building work from different eras, its fetching spire dating from the 13th century, while the church was expanded a number of times in the later medieval period. But however old the church is, it's certainly the most coveted landmark in Shear, existing not only as a focal point in the village community for over 800 years, but also as an important point for those travelling through this part of the country. Shear, here in the heart of Surrey, historically lay on a cross-country route known as the Pilgrim's Way, which stretched from the historic English capital of Winchester to the west of here, all the way to the ecclesiastical capital of Canterbury to the east. As such, the village and its church would have held a slightly more prominent status than any old rural chapel, and as we make our way between the headstones of St James's churchyard, there are many clues to the church's illustrious history, both as you look at it from the outside and the inside. And fortunately, St James's Church is open today both for prayer and for us to take a look inside, providing a valuable example of a typical local place of worship. Arriving into the church through its 12th century doorway, the interior of St James's is much like those of many other Church of England churches around the country featuring exquisite stained glass windows and characteristically Protestant bare stone walls. But there are still a fair few intriguing items to be found inside the church, including this exquisite eagle-shaped lectern and a plaque bearing the names of those locals who died in the First World War just behind. Elsewhere inside St James's, you'll find the village's early 13th century font, 
remains of Roman era tiles that were reused in the building of the church, and if you look up, historic timber framed beams which have kept a roof over worshippers in Shear for centuries. And to top it off, fans of slightly more modern, cheesy romantic comedies may recognise St James's Church too. The building featured in Bridget Jones's diary, The Edge of Reason, the sequel. Bridget Jones, however, is far from the most famous woman associated with St James's Church here. As about 700 years before she bumbled her way onto our screens, St James's Church was the setting for another story, that of the mysterious Anchoress of Shear. Originally born Christine Carpenter, the Anchoress of Shear was a religious hermit who sought to become a saint. And in order to achieve saintly status, she decided that she would enclose herself in a cell attached to this church for life. That was back in the 14th century, but on the outside of the church, there now stands a new, fetching little column here, known as the Millennium Stone, which was gifted to the village by the Bray family, the lords of the manor. That's the same Bray family as William Bray, who we spoke about a few moments ago. But what about Christine Carpenter, the anchoress of Shear? Well, Carpenter's bid for saintly status involved her only emerging from her small cell to take communion. But over time, she was spotted on numerous occasions outside the cell and breaking the vows which she'd promised to. This led to Carpenter being threatened with excommunication from the church, and so she wrote to none other than the Pope, asking for forgiveness, and effectively a second chance. Along with the small punishment, that forgiveness and second chance were granted, and she soon returned to her cell on the outside of Shears Parish Church, where it's thought she remained until she died, although to this day she's still never been granted sainthood. Having made our way out of the parish churchyard now though, we find ourselves back on the village square, home to some of the most beautiful buildings in this beautiful village. Much of the architecture here is Tudor, and the fantastically preserved nature of the village's cottages is one of the reasons that Shear has been earmarked as a real destination not just for tourists, but also film crews. We already know that the parish church featured in the Bridget Jones sequel, but as we look towards the impressive White Horse pub, housed within a building dating back to 1450, other films to have used Shear as a filming location include The Ruling Class with Peter O'Toole, the classic Powell and Pressburger drama A Matter of Life and Death, and in more recent years, the popular festive romantic comedy The Holiday, which featured a rural Surrey cottage that's located just a short distance from the village centre here. Flowing through the village centre, meanwhile, we find the delightful River Tillingbourne, a small river of around 15 miles that runs across central Surrey before joining the larger River Way just south of Guildford. Today the Tillingbourne is a really quaint countryside river filled with frolicking families and waterfowl alike. But for a long time, this far from large waterway was a vital arm in what was once the heavily industrial area of central Surrey. It seems like a far cry from the often sleepy and calm image of the county today. But Shear was indeed one of many villages in rural Surrey that was once brimming with industrial activity and we'll talk about exactly what sort in a couple of minutes. Crossing over the Tillingbourne, however, we now find ourselves on Middle Street, the main road into the village from the north. Middle Street is a little busier than Shear Lane, where we started our walk, and it's lined with a number of Shear's most historic buildings, including this, the old fire station. A pint-sized timber-framed structure erected back in 1885 Fire engines emerged from the building to put out blazes around the area until 1922, after which point the building was converted into Shear's Public Loo, a role which the now Grade 2 listed building retains to this day. But the old fire station is far from the only listed building to be found on Middle Street. Across the road here, we're looking at the Old Forge, a beautiful 17th century house that historically served as the workplace for the village metalsmith. And just next door to the Old Forge is the much larger Bodrin and Forge Cottages, a pair of residences in the modern day that were originally born as one much larger hall back in the 15th century, and which, despite being later divided, have jointly remained beautifully intact through the years. Much of the same can be said of the rest of Shear too, 
with the very centre of the village, including the parish church, square and these few houses lining Middle Street and Shear Lane, home to some almost entirely unaltered buildings dating back centuries, neighboured by a few relatively more modern landmarks like the Grand William Bray and the little old fire station. Sites come in all shapes and sizes here in Shear, and at the top of Middle Street you'll also find the old village well and drinking fountain set into the side of a historic garden wall. The fountain was established in 1886 when it was gifted to the village by two wealthy local ladies, and it remained one of the main places to find drinking water in Shear all the way until the 1970s, when new holes dug nearby by the local water company impacted the water table beneath the ground, unfortunately stopping the flow to this local well. Though no longer in use, the old well is one of many local features to have been nicely preserved in the modern day, faced across the street by another historic building that now plays home to the village post office and a row of shops, but which was originally built as a large house, dating to the 15th century at its oldest. Now back in the 15th century, Shear was a small village that made a living mostly through agriculture. But that changed as the medieval era drew to a close, when this village found itself in the heartlands of one of Surrey's most surprising new industrial hubs. Granted, this village was by no means an industrial titan. In fact, even as modern industry got underway from around the 17th century, Shear was located in one of the wildest, most remote areas of Surrey, where smugglers, sheep stealers and more found refuge from the eyes of the law. However, the presence of natural iron ore in the landscape provided a resource which locals could work into much sought after tools and implements, and this became a leading source of income in what became industrial era Shear, which also benefited from its position on the River Tillingbourne, a conveniently located waterway within easy reach of the much larger River Thames. Mills galore popped up alongside the Tillingbourne in the industrial era, producing goods including flour, grains, iron, paper and even gunpowder, and this local industry endured right up until the first half of the 20th century. Shear may be a picture postcard village, but there's a lot more to it than its beautiful views, and just here you'll find the Shear Museum, a delightful local museum where you can learn even more about this village's captivating history, which we haven't had time to touch on during this walk including events such as the Battle of Shear, which took place back in 1258, the Great Train Crash of 1904, and even the invention of the Christmas card. The museum, which is free to enter, is neighboured just here by Shear's eye-catching village hall, which was built in 1922 as the prime venue for meetings and events organised by the villagers. But as we now make our way along Gomshaw Lane, which leads eastwards out of the village, who exactly are the people that make up Shear's population today? Well, of the roughly thousand people who live in the village of Shear today, many work locally, in the village's shops, cafes and tourist facilities, while a number also work on farms surrounding the village. A minority of locals also live in Shear, but commute to work in London, a common feature of many Surrey towns and villages in the modern day. And put all together, the people of Shear make up a vibrant little community, which in truth has always been the case. Once upon a time home to fascinating characters like Christine Carpenter, the anchoress of Shear, along with the wealthy Bray family and many more, Shear has continued to unfold a unique history over the centuries, nowadays home to yet more appealing draws, from its picturesque setting to its association with Hollywood, and even award-winning restaurants like Kingham's that we can see across the road, housed in what was historically known as the Hangman's Cottage. There's plenty more to see should you venture out further into the wilderness of the parish, but having reached the edge of the village centre proper, it's here where we've sadly reached the end of our walk around Shear for today. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you're looking forward to making a trip to this beautiful village for yourself sometime soon.